of, uh, of treatment. But as we talk about hypertension and the individualizing treatment, we should not individualize only in this setting based on race, but we should also individualize based on gout that we are dealing with. So remember that treating hypertension with gout in mind, we should not only remember the drugs that might increase uric acid, but we should also be mindful and take advantages of drugs that lower uric acid. And among these drugs, again, there is ARBs and there is calcium channel blocker. So you see that whenever you want to combine, for example, and the individualized treatment for this particular patient, you will see that the combination of amlodipine with an alapril as a black person will make sense. But you, when you go further, you will rather substitute losartan for an alapril to take advantage of losartan uric acid lowering effect or uricosuric effect. So that is what these drugs share in common, being it losartan, being it amlodipine, being it nifedipine, being it even triglyceride uh, lowering drugs, the fibrate. And why, why did we bring up fibrate here? Our patient was also a metabolic syndrome patient. And through the fact that he had increased abdominal circumference, he had raised uh, uh, cholesterol and he, he had raised triglycerides. So those are the drugs that not only will be beneficial for our patient to deal with those additional comorbidities, but these drugs will also add value to the management of gout. These again are just the data backing the impact of losartan. It further reduces by almost 25% your uric acid level. Adalat or nifedipine and amlodipine, as you can see, reduces also uh, amlodipine reduces uric acid by 21%, nifedipine by 13%. And uh, whenever, if there is indication, then we need to be mindful if you have a patient with gout and this patient have increased triglyceride and the criteria for, uh, for adding fibrate are met by the dyslipidemia uh, 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 guidance, you know that by prescribing fibrate to this patient, not only you reduce triglyceride, but you also make it easier for your patient to get there when it comes to, to gout. So gout, yes, hypertension, yes, in our patient, black patient, yes, it means Hydrochlorothiazide in South African context is thrown away. So the combination that we should be going for will be amlodipine and enalapril, but knowing that losartan is there, accessible to us, not only with less cough compared to enalapril, not only with less angioedema compared to enalapril, but in this specific instance, losartan taking the space of, amlod of enalapril add value and further help us decrease uric acid and get our patient to achieve the, the, the target easily. So now, Gout has always been almost synonymous of flair because every single person, there are very few patients, even in the community, when you talk about gout that will bring up tofa. 
they will almost always bring up uh, bring up uh, uh, flares. So they this need all of us to be mindful of which modalities are available there for us to take care of friends. So these are some of the drugs, first line drugs, that we should be choosing for our patient that experience friends. But how do we combine them also matters because there was a time in this patient folders that both prednisone, brufen, and colchicine were prescribed for this particular patient. And even when brufen was prescribed, we didn't use the optimal, we basically treated the flare with if the dose or the dosage that we use for patients that are on chronic therapy, particularly the patient that have OA. So, colchicine, when we want to prescribe for flare, we need to remember colchicine. The first day, we start with two tablets of 0 0.5 milligram as a first dose. Then uh, if one hour later, the patient is still having pain, they can take the third tablet. And later on, you will be prescribing 0 0.5 milligram, meaning one tablet of 0 0.5 milligram, eight hourly until the flare resolve, which usually takes five to seven days. And the uh, one thing that we need to remember is that gout flares can terminate themselves. They can go away even in the absence of treatment. They hardly will go, the, you will hardly see a patient that will be in flare even without treatment beyond two weeks. So, but now, whenever you have a patient with reduced renal function or reduce or, or impair uh, hepatic function, the, the dose of colchicine might be reduced or should be reduced. And there are some critical drug-drug interaction that we need to remember. It's not only about ARVs when we talk about A and ritonavir, ritonavir particularly here, when you have a patient on ritonavir boosted PI and you want to prescribe colchicine, you should be mindful of the fact that uh, uh, the doses should be adjusted uh, to avoid uh, complication or toxicity to colchicine. If you use prednisone, so we need to remember that we use 30 to 40 milligram of prednisone that can be prescribed once a day or that can be given in a divided dose. You can also choose to calculate the daily dose using the 0 0.5 milligram per kg per day. And this treatment will be given at, until it, uh, the, the, the the, the flare resolve, which takes us just under uh, two weeks. The, we don't always need to taper uh, prednisone when it is given uh, in, for a short uh, period of time, even if the option of you can stop or taper over seven days because if you've given for five days to 10 days, then you start tapering. So you would have kept your patient on prednisone for almost, almost three weeks, at least three weeks, which it's not always necessary. 
Uh, and um, whenever we prescribe prednisone, we need to remember that patients that are not controlled and they indicate to our patient that are not controlled who get recurrent uh, flare that although they are not on what we might consider to be chronic uh, oral corticosteroid therapy for us to worry about side effect, patients that take repeated short courses of glucocorticosteroid can also uh, end up experiencing uh, the complication uh, like the one that patient on chronic therapy go through. And said wise, you can use any of these, but remind the dose. Brufen, it is 800 milligram eight hourly, not the 200, not the 400 that we are used uh, to, to prescribe to our patient that have OA. And if you prescribe or have access to diclofenac, it will be 50 milligram 12 hourly. And if you have access to endometacin, it will be 50 milligram eight hourly. There is endometacin, I think, at CMH at the, the new, the big hospital or the big pharmacy. And usually people from, from uh, ortho prescribe and they have access to it. So it will depend. Any of these, if prescribed properly, will work. And if you compare colchicine to prednisone and to NSAID, any of this modality is equally uh, uh, effective for your patient uh, flare termination. So there is no, you want to base your choice on efficacy, but you will base your choice on the patient clinical condition, meaning things that will contraindicate one of this modality, because any of these three modality is uh, effective. So things that might impact or influence your choice is that NSAID can easily be given to younger patients who don't have renal issue, who don't have cardiovascular issue, and who don't have active uh, gastrointestinal disease. So when we say younger patient here, it's younger than 60 years, so I'm young. So if I come with gout, you, you might give me uh, uh, ibuprofen. I'm as young as most of you guys there. So gout-wise, when it comes to, to, to flare. So the other issue is about combination. How do you combine? There will be instances where combination therapy is needed. And those instances as when you have a severe polyarticular phrase. This patient will need a combination therapy. Or if the patient reported the history that they want to use monotherapy and the response was suboptimal, those patients should at their subsequent uh, flare be offered combination therapy rather than monotherapy. So how do you combine these are uh, the indication? How do you combine? It's basically first you don't combine different and said you cannot do brufen, diprofenac or brufen endometacin or endometacin uh, diprofenac. So you don't combine NSAID. Within NSAID, you don't combine them. That is the first golden rule. So you don't give a poly NSAID therapy. Now, if you want to combine the other, you can only combine colchicine and prednisone or colchicine with uh, NSAID, and you will never combine prednisone or corticosteroid with NSAID. And this patient once got triple therapy. So we can combine, yes, never combine 
and said by themselves to get a dual therapy of NSAID and never combine NSAID with steroid. You can only, so whenever you wanna combine, the anchor will be colchicine that will be combined with prednisone or colchicine combined with any of the NSAID that is available to you. And when we treat, we treat to target. The target is less than 0 0.36 when your patient doesn't have TOFI. And if you have a patient with TOFI, the target becomes 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And uh, what else needed to be reminded? to us, what is the, my slides are not moving. Just move your marker lower, maybe it will, don't know yes, what. Yes, I'm trying to look for my marker and I didn't display. <laughs> the marker vanished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for my marker because I didn't displace it, but it just froze. I hope it might just be not, connectivity. Uh, hmm? If uh, you're really stuck, then just stop share, share screen and then open this, just share the screen again. That might sort it out. But you don't get your you don't have your marker, hey? Oh, let me see. Um, I think that nope. I don't have the marker. Whoa, okay, okay, now I need to go back, share, uh, sharing. We can see your screen, mm -hmm. see your screen, you're still there, yeah. you can just open your, you can just go to slideshow. Yes. Yes, we're back on, that's great. We are back on. So we were here. Those are the targets that we need to remember. Why do we need a target? Is that when we treat to target, we terminate flare, we, we reduce uh, the incidence of flare, we prevent and we get to fight to resolve, we might reverse arthropathy, we improve the quality, the, the physical function, of the patient and we improve the health quality, uh, health related quality of life. So the most common drug that we use is allopurinol, which is our first line. And these are the indication. It's not usually except for patients that have gout, have gout, so it means they went through the, 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 the criteria, the, uh, diagnostic criteria and the FCKD that we can put on treatment from the first uh, episode of uh, the first flay, usually we will wait for a second flare before we give our patient long-term therapy. But that the exception also is when you receive, you see your patient for the first time and your patient has urate arthropathy. That's why it is important for us to do x-rays in our patient. So we need to remember this indication is because we usually easily uh, recall that the, the, the episode was not the first one, but we forget that if you have a top five, you don't need to wait for another episode, or if you have arthropathy, you don't need to wait for another episode, or if you have gout and you are diagnosed for the first time and you have renal insufficiency, you need to be put on treatment from the get-go. So, and you will usually wait for two weeks following the flare for us to put uh, the, the patient on allopurinol. We, don't know what is happening today. Okay. So the principle is that you start low 
and you go slow. So you will be starting your patient with 100 milligram of uh, allopurinol and uh, you will increase at week four, week eight. So every four weeks you can increase, but in patient with normal kidney function, you can even increase every uh, uh, second week. How many times did we do this for our patient? We prescribe allopurinol and we forget. So this means that every four weeks or every two to four weeks for patient with normal kidney function, we should check uric acid. If it is not on target, we increase by 100 milligram or less. And uh, this is to try to reduce flares and to try to reduce uh, adverse reaction. So why did we say less? Less it is usually when you have a patient with impaired kidney function. This is just to, this is just to show us that if we were going by the book, a patient that is not on target that started with 100 milligrams should be the following month on 200, the third month or the, other, the, the end of the second month should be on 300 and you go on uh, and never keep your patient on one dose if your patient didn't uh, achieve uh, uh, the target yet. And for this imply that you don't prescribe and forget to carry on checking your patient uh, uric acid level. So at the beginning, until they get to the target, it will be uh, four weeks. And once they are controlled, they are on the target, you confirm three months later and uh, six months for the next year, then you go annually. I want I will finish with uh, the specific of patient with reduced renal function. Uh, so meaning every stage three or more, when you wanna prescribe them allopurinol, you need to adjust your starting dose and you need to adjust your increment dose. So you prescribe only 1.5 milligram per unit of EGFR, meaning if your patient has an EGFR of 30, the starting dose will be 45. You cannot start with 100 in that patient. And every single patient with G4, a G3 or more that was started accordingly by 1.5 milligram per, per unit of EGFR, the increment is not by more than 50 milligram. And if a normal EGFR patient can get increment under four weeks, even by two weeks, every single patient with impaired kidney function should wait at least four weeks before the dose is uh, increased. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you very much, Dr. K. I've been taking furious notes. It'll be great to be able to probably create a handout for this as well, um, because this is such vital information in terms of how we're managing our, our gout patients, which I think is quite often uh, quite loosely <laughs> um, and how people actually manage it. And having a nice treat to target um, overview here has been very, very useful. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from our participants? Um, hi, they, Dr. Kelly. They should be asking questions before the, the talk because they usually don't want to ask a question. Hi, Dr. K. Hi, uh, how are you? Um, Dr. K, I wanted to ask um, with regards to your kidney failure and also Colchison, um, at what rate do you like, what's the dosage when the patient has kidney failure? Uh, it is, uh, there are people, uh, there, there are recommendations that below 15, we should avoid uh, giving them uh, cautious. And 
we, I didn't give you the, the colchicine because there is also colchicine that we prescribe as a prophylaxis when somebody is on allopurinol and people should remember this. When you give allopurinol, not only you, you go slow, you start low, you go slow to prevent flay, but you also add either colchicine or NSAID but now there are people who also, whenever those two are contraindicated, that give prednisone. So if it is consciousness for prevention, uh, in a normal EGFR that is above 30, you can give one tablet to two tablets. But once it falls below 30, the maximum that you will give, it will be one tablet. And oh. below 15, you will avoid to put the patient on on cautious in. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Okay. Thank you very much. So generally, we don't like using prednisone as a bridging for our first choice. We'll only do that, for example, in severe renal failure where we can't use enzymes and colchicine. Is that right? Yes. So the the for prophylaxis, the first choice should be NSAID or colchicine. But you know that there will be patients that will come back and say they cannot tolerate diarrhea. So then you need uh, NSAID, then you find out that, that the EGFR is low, you cannot use NSAID then for the first three to six months. If you don't put them on anything, if you don't offer them prednisone, then be prepared that they will be coming back to you every month with a play up until they get the they get to target, which is also inconvenient for your patient. So you, call, you will keep them on the colchicine or the enzyme until they're on target? You, no, you, usually uh, we keep them. The recommendation is that the patient should be kept for at least three months, not more than six months. And we've seen patients that have been left on colchicine combined with allopurinol for years and years. So that colchicine that is given for prophylaxis or NSAID given for prophylaxis should be offered for about three months, but not more than six months. And I assume we won't use that very high dosages of the ibuprofen? No, 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 no. That is a low dose of ibuprofen. That the, the NSAID for prophylaxis is the standard dose that we use for, for OA. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Good question. Thanks, Dr. Mapangwana. Um, yes, I think that's great. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. K. In terms of what are we doing next? <laughs> we do asthma, chronic okay. asthma. Then oh, wow, exciting. Then okay. uh, the third session will be exacerbation of both COPD and the asthma. So the next session will be, the next uh, three sessions will be respiratory. Right. I'll have a look at dates with you because I'm going away the end of the month. We might not have three Wednesdays left, but I'll, I'll chat to you at work and we'll set the dates. We'll see. We'll, we'll coordinate. Great. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Likewise. Bye. Bye.